Sometimes life gives us lemons. Sometimes it gives us lemonade. Other times it gives us something entirely out of left field that makes us say WTF. But no matter what obstacles come, there is most often a way out on the other side and we are once again victorious. My name is Dr. Rowe, and you are listening to my podcast about resilience. Every guest shares a tragedy to triumph story to give listeners like you the inspiration to push through every single day. Listen now as my next guest shares how they were life jacked. What do you do? When your mind begins to alter your reality with delusions, hallucinations, and keeps you from concentrating. My name is Dr. Rowe, and this is Life Jacked, the Resilience Podcast. Life Jacked is when an unfortunate or unplanned event happens to jack with your life. My guest for this week, Tyvon Conrad, is a former Marine who served our U.S. military after being an Eagle Scout. He will share his mental health journey struggles that led to him learning of his diagnosis of schizophrenia. Tyvon has become an author, and his published book, Gone in a Bit, provides full transparency and shines a light on the difficult diagnosis, the daily challenges of life with schizophrenia, and dares his readers to reframe their own outlook on mental health. Whether you live with mental illness or are seeking to better understand it, Gone in a Bit is a beautiful, poetic read that will surely satisfy. Tyvon shares how he received help and support to get ahead in life and not let life get ahead of him. Hi, Tyvon. Welcome. Thank you so much for being a guest on my show. How are you? Hi. hi. Um, I'm doing very well, and thank you. Tyvon, thank you so much for serving as a Marine in our U.S. military. What made you decide to enlist? I wanted to enlist to find adventure, to find, you know, I always had a sense of danger, to find something competitive, something that I had to try hard to succeed. And that's when I decided to join the United States Marine Corps. You received your schizophrenia diagnosis in 2021. When was your first indication that you were having some type of mental health struggle? I started not, I started not to feel myself in 2016 and I started to feel, excuse me, I started to feel thoughts about like I didn't, maybe I didn't matter to people. I'm not good enough. I started feeling bad about myself. Like I didn't matter to the world. And it just struck me as odd because those are things that I never, I never felt before. And it was close to the time I was, I started taking um, uh, medicine to stop smoking. And I thought maybe it was the medicine that was doing that to me. But as time gradually got on, because I never followed through with taking that medication, um, I, you know, my thoughts and feelings started, started worsening. So it was a sudden onset. So it was not something that you've always experienced, you know, since you were young, so just suddenly you started having these thoughts. It was very yes, it was it was scary. Um, it, it felt like like as though it was it was creeping up my spine, and that I wasn't and and that, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have the right mindset. Wow. So you were experiencing that, and as a result of that, it inspired you, I guess, to write your book, Gone in a Bit. So you got your diagnosis in 2021 and that that's quite a bit of time from the first onset in 2016 that's about five years absolutely yeah it was a big it was a big time gap and so you decided to write the book gone in a bit so what inspired you exactly like how did you get the bravery and courage to share this is very intimate details about your life in this book so what inspired you to write gone in a bit I, w- I always had a joy for, for writing and expressing myself. Um, I started writing poetry when I was in elementary school. And, um, you know, and 
it, it was something that just stuck to me. But when I started feeling those signs and symptoms of schizophrenia, I needed something to grasp onto. And that was the only thing I knew. Um, that was the only thing I knew uh, how to do. So, you know, I started writing down my thoughts and feelings and I started writing down how I was feeling day to day, like a journal. I kept it as a journal. And eventually, gradually, um, I started thinking about, you know, a way that I can put this all together and turn it into something special to, you know, um, to fill my time during the day when I was just feeling awful, you know, inside and I needed something to channel my aggression and my sadness and my depression. And I eventually turned it into a poetry collection book. Now, schizophrenia is often misunderstood. How does this, how does your book address the myth versus the realities of living with this condition? My book consists of the cognitive theory of schizophrenia, the who, what, when, where, and why, the euphoria, and the physical of schizophrenia. To say that abnormal is not so bad and crazy as people lead it on to be that don't understand um, the mental health disorder. And in writing your book, we're there any moments that were particularly challenging for you to share? Because I know it's a book of poetry and, you know, the poems are just flowing, but was there any moment that you were like, whoa, maybe I shouldn't put this in the book? Um, I can't say there was a moment like that. Um, one of my, one of the things I said actually in my book was that um, my legacy, I wanted to be an open door for readers of any generation, I, for anybody um, that uh, found uh, my poetry collection book, um, for people to read and see and experience and be able to take away, take something away from it. Now, could you describe or share a specific experience that you write about in your book um, drawing on my easel, creating a scene while imagining, and putting together my own personal thoughts and feelings, I related this to painting and drawing and collecting my thoughts when I was in the um, when I was in therapy in the inpatient clinic at the Veterans Hospital. Now, did that serve as a turning point in your struggle with schizophrenia? Do you think so? Actually, oh, absolutely. Drawing, I, when I started realizing that, because I didn't always like to draw and paint, but when I when I um, was introduced to it in the Veterans Hospital for therapy, um, I started looking more into it and realizing um, that, you know, I was able to, you know, if I can draw and paint, I can, you know, put some, I can I can put anything together, and that's when, you know, I started looking more into turning my daily journal. Um, my thoughts and feelings um, into a poetry collection book. How do you hope your book will impact those that read it, especially those who might be dealing with schizophrenia or know someone who is? I I hope my book is a lighthouse tower for people um, for, you know, because I, I – I feel like schizophrenia is sh- sh- um, the shadows and darkness. Any any mental health disorder is shadows and darkness, and I and I want people to take away from this that it's okay to express themselves. It's okay to um, talk to people about their problems, um, and I also want my book to be an example of what um, you know a person can do when they're dealing with hard times and struggles. I want to be an example for for the world um, to see that you know you can you can make something good out of something bad. Now you say that, and you well, you've mentioned before that you have always journaled, you've always written poems, and many times, a lot of people say that writing is very therapeutic for them. That writing is a therapeutic process, and you already mentioned that this was the case for you with Gone in a Bit. So as a result of writing, once you get the words out on the paper, what is the feeling that you have? The feeling that I have is like 
opening up a wound and and gradually healing it when I write poetry. Um, for my thoughts and feelings to sink um, into the paper with the ink and for something else to be created that's that that's good in my life and that means something. Do you have any recent poems that you've written that maybe you would like to share to the listeners? Oh, this, this, one, this one's called I've Been Thinking. I saw lightning, a stormy day on the beach. It was frightening. When I was a small child, I was afraid to walk in the snow because of the crunching of the leaves underneath. Someone told me I'm special. They can see it, that I have a purpose. Life has a rhyme and reason. It's how you perceive it. Blue Apple. Wonderful. What insight do you wish people knew about schizophrenia? I wish that people would see that schizophrenia is not such a bad, um, even though it's a mental health disorder, even though it's a serious mental health health, health disorder, um, that, you know, when somebody's going through it, it doesn't mean that they're, you know, an awful, terrible person that's violent. They, I wish they would, they would see that, um, that, you know, a person is, is is struggling and that they that they they may maybe want they that they need that they they just need help even though that person that's dealing with the mental health disorder you know may come off as maybe aggravated or um just not having a bad day or just or just having a bad day um that maybe that person may want to engage with somebody else and talk to them and vent and maybe feel just to feel better about themselves. And many of my guests come on and of course, all of you talk about resilience and how you've gone through a situation that has life jacked you, right? It's something that you didn't anticipate and then boom, here you are. The other point, now that you say that about life jacked, that maybe that person is, um, maybe that person is, you know, in great need, of help and that because they're acting the way they are, maybe it's a cry for help or maybe um, that person is just stuck, you know, within themselves looking for, looking for um, like another path to go down or, or trying to figure themselves out that, you know, we're not, you know, mean people inside that it's, they're just fighting, they're just fighting a battle within them. Now, do you have a support system? I do. Um, I have my mom. She supports me a lot. And my family, my kids, um, they're a good line of support. Um, and, you know, they're always there for me every day, um, no, no, matter, no matter what happens. In what ways have they helped you? Um, anything from just, you know, an everyday talk um, to – you know, helping me out with, um, you know, I know a couple of years ago I needed help with money because I wasn't able to go to work um, because of my schizophrenia. It was it was just really tough to go to work and engage with people, which is, uh, you know, another big um, downfall um, to schizophrenia, engaging with people and, and, you know, getting along with them and talking. And and that was one of the big big things that, you know, ruined my job performance and that she was always there helping me out, you know, with money or things that I needed, um, you know, to keep going and, you know, keep myself moving from day to day. Well, it sounds like your mother is a wonderful woman. Absolutely. She, um, I'm actually adopted. She adopted me when I was three. Now, many veterans have felt that the military has not necessarily supported them upon exiting or retirement. Have you felt this way? And if so, what would you like to see change in the support we offer our veterans? Um, I, I can't say that I had any bad, um, had, had any bad experiences with being supported as a veteran. Um, I am very, um, I've been taken care of very well. Um, whether it's you know going to hospital visits at the VA or um, or having benefits um, outside the military uh, now that I now that I'm out I've been out for about eight years now I can't really say that there was ever a bad time or a bad experience with 
about you know with with the veterans affairs and being supported now i can only really speak for myself because everybody's different and everybody's um everybody everybody's outcome is different every you know everybody's life is different but i you know i wish the best for any veteran or you know anybody that's getting out of the military do have have backup have benefits and have and have and have help out there um with their lives now was there a struggle to find the correct medication or dosage to start your medication therapy oh absolutely um it was a very uphill battle um i started taking medicine in 2016 i've tried over i've been on over 15 medications or so to um you know and and was studied and um medications that made me feel angry medic medications that took away my um appetite medications that either made me really tired over over drowsy or um not or not feeling tired at all um yeah some medications made me not feel tired um at all or some medications made me feel like I needed to hide away um, from society because I didn't want to talk to anybody or engage with them or or um, I felt like I just wanted to be in the dark and, and be alone. Um, I finally got on the right medications around 2021 to 2022 um, on Zyprexa. And this medication I've been on for the last four years and it's it's done amazing wonders for me. I go to the gym now on a regular basis. I'm able to eat. I'm able to function properly. Um, but yeah, that's another that's another big downfall to people struggling with mental health disorders. On top of being scared to open up to open up to somebody and talk about their problems and talk about you know what they're how they're feeling is also taking medication and maybe they're they're and fear of losing control of themselves or not being in charge of themselves. Um, and that's, that's another thing that I want, I would want people to understand about schizophrenia is, or any mental health disorder for that matter, that that's, that's, that's the general feeling or that's the general thing that people, that people fear is either not, is either losing control of themselves or, or, you know, taking medicine and, and not feeling like themselves, and that's the biggest battle of dealing with mental health disorder is the medicine, the you know, the opening up and accepting somebody's help into um, their lives that are already falling apart. And that's like adding somebody in new that you don't know that you know that you know you don't you don't know the outcome, you don't know what's going to happen, and that's the biggest wall between. Um, a human life and, and, a, and a mental disorder and, um, and somebody that wants to reach out and help. Do you feel like it has been hard for you to ask for help at any time? Um, in the beginning, yes, I didn't, I didn't want to ask for help at all. I thought I could do it on my own. I was a big, tough Marine. I can, I can drive through this. I can just crash through it and, and really no, it didn't because it knocked me right down on my butt and it's a, and you know, it just, it, I ended up losing, I lost everything. You know, I'm finally now getting everything back together in my life. Um, schizophrenia is a very nasty mental health disorder, and if not treated properly or if not taken seriously, it, it, will, just, it will just ruin you completely. And that's what happened to me. You know, I lost everything, my kids, my, my house, my items. I lost my military stuff. I lost, I lost it all because... I just I just crashed. In your opinion, what are the best ways to build resilience? Because you're you're in the process right now. Like you said, you lost everything and you're in the process of building back better as they say. How are you showing resilience? I got closer to God and I found inspiration in writing and and writing poetry and drawing and painting um and i i think i think to i think you just need to once you find that inspiration 
you just need to just drive yourself into it and just don't just don't look back. Just find what you like to do and stick to it as if you were, you know, concentrating if if as if you were just um completely concentrated on it like nothing else matters. That um I read uh there was a quote somewhere that had a title that said dream and it said I think it said, I think it said um stick to stick to your dreams and don't and don't look back. It was a little boy in a, on sitting on a basketball and in the middle of a basketball court gazing up at a window with the light shining through and it really stuck to me. Um, and I just imagined myself as that kid just gazing off into the light, just thinking about my dream, what I want to be, what I want to do, and just forgetting all the bad things that happened to me and and um, and just pushing my way through. And and I think it's just drive and you have to you have to find a need to want to want that whatever it is that you want or whatever it is that you know you see and never let go of that inspiration and never let go of that that, that thing that just grasps you onto that to that light, you know, there's always something in the way of um of the bad things. I always I always say there's always that light in the way. There's always something in the way of that bad thing that you might run into or, you know, that's in your way, that obstacle. I just wish that, you know, um, people that read my book and people that find other things like my book, like whether it's a song, whether it's a painting, you know, that when people grasp onto it, you know, they just never let that thing go. Well, Tyvon, thank you so much for your time. Please take the time to let everyone know how they can get a copy of your book, Gone in a Bit. Um, you can visit my online website, Vinehouse, V-I-N-E-H-O-U-S-E dot online. That is my website where my book um, is located. It will take you right to Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. Um, again, my the title of my book is called Gone in a Bit. Any last words of encouragement for the listeners? Find that light in your life and grasp onto it. In doing that, you're finding yourself within that inspiration. Well, Kaivon, I wish you and your family nothing but blessings and abundance. Please take care. Thank you, ma'am. You have just listened to Life Jacked, the Resilience Podcast with your host, Dr. Rowe. Subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, and any other podcast streaming platform. Remember to live, laugh, love, learn and then repeat. See you in the next episode.